This is the walkthrough video for my 2011 Coachman Freelander 21QB. Um, also, I refer to it as RV number two. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the walkthrough with you guys. Um, we're gonna start with the outside of the motorhome and work our way in. Uh, if you have any questions after we're done, um, feel free to contact me and ask. Um, I'm available pretty much almost any time to answer questions. Uh, this first compartment we have here is the uh, propane tank area. your on-off valve right here, and your full gauge right here. Um, you'll notice that this doesn't actually read full even though it is. Um, it's pretty common to see them read as low as three quarters. Um, if you fill it and it doesn't read any higher there, I know that that's the case, and I'm not gonna fault you for not having it full when you return it. You got an outdoor electrical plug-in right here. If you had a TV in this one, which this one does not have a TV, at least I'm pretty sure it doesn't, there's a cable hookup for it right there. This guy here is your uh, refrigerator outlet. Um, sometimes you'll feel some hot air coming out of that thing. Um, that's pretty normal because it runs on propane. This guy here, this is your main storage compartment. It's the pretty large one. Got a little lock handle right here that you can uh, use to catch the door right here. Just like that. Um, just make sure you disconnect that before you close it, otherwise you'll break it. Um, inside here, you'll find your water hose, leveling blocks, got the ladder for the cab over. There's a table right here. Um, usually have four camping chairs in here. We gotta get a couple more, we're kinda short. Got a spare tire in the garbage bag there. And uh, you see there's another uh, compartment door there you can get in through from the back. You'll see that there's a key lock box here, code 2002. Um, you can use that to lock keys inside of here if you want to split up your group or if you need to return the motor home and I'm unavailable uh, to meet with you. So that's what that's for. This motor home used to have an awning. Um, it got damaged uh, repeatedly over and over again. Um, and I stopped fixing it because parts were obsolete and it was very expensive to fix. So, no awning, apologize for that, but uh, that is what it is. This is the uh, rear storage compartment access. Um, leads to the same compartment here, just gives you a little better access to some things. I do have ladders on here. Um, I recommend you don't use them. Um, Please don't go up on the roofs. They are thin rubber membranes, and if you have a rock stuck in your shoe, um, it's really easy to poke holes in. And um, the membranes cost about anywhere to five to eight thousand dollars, depending on the length of your motorhome to replace. Um, and it also causes leaks and water damage. So, unless you absolutely have to, please do not go up on the roof. On this side here. You have um, your water tank fill. This is a little different than most motorhomes. It's actually a hose attachment that you would screw the hose into. Um, when you turn the hose on, you can let it fill as much as you want. And the only way to tell that it's full is it'll start running out of a overflow that is located behind this tire here. So you can hear that and know that it is full and see that and know that it is full and then shut the water off. If you're at a campground, that has uh, a water supply hookup. You can hook it up to here and shut the water pump off in the motorhome and it'll bypass your storage tank and only use the water connection that you have here. This is your fuel tank, unleaded fuel only. The cheapest stuff you can find is just fine. Not gonna make any difference if you put something fancy in it. Uh, down here are your dump valves for your dump tank. I'll show you where the hose is located shortly here. You have two different valves here. You have your large one, which is for your toilet. And you have your smaller one here, which is still open. Um, we usually leave them open between rentals to show that they are actually empty. Um, but what you would do is you would take the hose, you would click it onto this here, and then put that in the uh, dump station. You would take this valve and you'd pull it straight out and that will dump all your toilet um, contents into the sewer. 
Um, one is, once that's done, you shut that and then you open this valve here and this will take your shower water and your sink water, stuff that would kind of rinse everything out and make it a little bit cleaner. And uh, once that's done, you shove that back in and you take the hose off and put the hose away. Highly recommend using gloves when you do this um, because that can be kind of gross. This compartment here is where you'll find the dump hose and gloves and the things that you need to run the dump station. That's the end you would hook to the uh, camper. Um, I'm not gonna touch that to show you the other end here. There it is right there. That's the other end that goes into the sewer. Um, so you've got everything you need there. This here is your hot water heater and your furnace outlets. They do blow out hot air. Um, that's normal because they run on propane, so you don't have to worry about those. They're controlled from the inside. This box here, this is the electrical box. This is where your electrical cable is hooked up. Kind of hard to tell if you can see inside here, but uh, there it is. There's an electrical box inside there with a cable plugged into it. And that is the, uh, the end that you would plug in at a campground. Um, Although if you want to have the generator do any good when you have the generator running, it has to be plugged into this box. Just unplugs like a regular plug. Looks like this. If you have a uh, connector at the campground, let's see if I got it in here like it's supposed to. Not a lot of room inside here. There it is. I've got the uh, the adapter for it right here to have a regular plug-in. So if your campground only has that, you plug that in, and then you plug this into this guy right here, just like this. Sorry for being out of frame. And then you can adapt it to the right right plug set. So that's just sitting inside the compartment here. When you're done, just go ahead and make sure you get that plug back in. And that way you can make sure that your uh, your generator does what it's supposed to be doing there. Sorry, I'm trying to get that in frame and see it in the sunlight's pretty hard. All right, sorry, I'll twist it around there. I'm not much into making videos or anything artistic, so I apologize for the quality of my videos, but uh, hopefully they have the information you would like in them. Um, this last compartment down here, this is the generator. It's controlled from the inside. So you shouldn't have to worry about anything down here unless there's something wrong. And in that case, go ahead and call me and we'll go through it. Um, on the inside of the cab here, it's your basic vehicle. Nothing really fancy here. Um, I do have a tire pressure gauge here. It's pretty straightforward. You got your front left, your rear outer and your rear inner tires. Um, it's solar paneled. Um, so it should charge itself. This removes from the dash, it's just sitting inside there. If the battery does go low and doesn't recharge on its own, you can press and hold the negative button on here to shut it off. Your tire pressure will typically be between 70 and 80 pounds depending on temperature and elevation. And um, you know, this can go all the way down to, I believe, 58 pounds before it'll start beeping at you for a low tire. Um, if it gets that low in the summertime, it probably is actually low, and uh, you should swing into the nearest service station to get your tires filled. Um, the other thing you need to know is the parking brake. This is your parking brake right here, and this is the parking brake release. So if you use it, please make sure that you release the parking brake before you take off. Other than that, it is a standard cab vehicle. There's nothing unfamiliar about it. Um, the mirrors on most of these motorhomes are manual. There is no automatic adjustment. So the driver's side is pretty easy to adjust, but it helps to have somebody adjust the passenger side for you. All right, we're gonna come around to the uh, camper door here. Please notice that there is a door catch here, so try not to force the door open beyond that point. 
And uh, inside the camper here, we have a few things. We have the main battery shutoff switch for the uh, camper battery. A couple light switches for running the lights. And then we have an electrical outlet for the uh, or anything you want to plug in. To the right here, we have a fire extinguisher if you need a fire extinguisher. Inside the camper here, um, we'll start here where your main control panel is. Um, in order to test your levels, that's your propane, that's your camper battery, your fresh water, your black water, and your gray water. Black water is the toilet water. So you can test your level there. Oh, looks like we should probably turn the battery on to the on position. That'd probably help. And now you can test your uh, propane level and see that it's full battery level it's not quite full but it's been sitting for a few weeks <coughs> excuse me i'm sorry my throat's getting a little dry there fresh water is full or apparently you're right on the line of being full and not quite um black tank it's reading full um not because it is full but because black tanks misread unless they're clean every single time um, if you've ever owned a motorhome or an RV, you know exactly what I'm talking about and what is involved in cleaning those and why I don't do it every time. If you really want to know what your black tank looks like when you flush the toilet, just look down and you'll see right into it and know exactly when it's full. Gray water is a lot more accurate, um, although it can sometimes misread too, um, just depending on what people put down the tank, but usually these don't have a problem. They're pretty accurate. If it's, uh misreading and it fills up before it really should you'll notice it in the shower um, water coming up out of the drain that is an indicator that it's too full and needs to be dumped water pump i typically always leave that on um, basically if you are not using the water and you hear the pump run every once in a while it tells me there's a water leak somewhere that i need to fix so that's why i leave that on your water heater when you first turn it on, this fault light will turn on until it lights. And now it's lit and it shut the light off. And in about 20 minutes, you'll have hot water. I'm gonna shut that off because it's not going out for a rental for a few more days. If you use the generator, which most of you will, um, this is your start button for it. Press and hold. Fires up, tells you how many hours are on it. Um, if you have it plugged into the uh, camper like you should, you can come over to the microwave here and you'll see that it's not working currently. There is a switch that needs to uh, kick on and activate to uh, put power to the actual camper and it usually takes about anywhere up to 30, 40 seconds for that to actually happen. So we'll come back to that and show you once that's turned on. The generator runs on the same tank of fuel as the actual camper does, the, the motorhome engine does. So when it hits anywhere from a quarter to a third of a tank of fuel, what it does is it'll actually shut the fuel supply off to the uh, generator, which can starve it for fuel. Um, and by doing so, um, it protects you from running out of fuel. Um, but it can also cause you to get air in the line for the generator, which will make it not start right away. If that happens, you can press and hold this prime button for about 10 seconds and then try starting it for about 10 seconds and go through that process two or three times and usually that's enough to fire it back up. So, moving forward. If you want to stop the generator, hit the stop button right there. Um, your sink here is your standard sink. Just hot cold on off. Um, just got your drain inside here. You can drain the water out if you're sitting level. Um, your stove here, it's a little different than most stoves. Um, this does not have any, uh, actually it does have the auto ignition on it. Some of them don't. So you just set this for the light position and then reach over here to, to do the strike. Took a couple of times because I filled it up with propane once it was empty, so there was a little air in the line, which brings up a good point. If you do run out of propane, what I typically do is go through here and manually light all three burners, like so. Now, 
And that back one, I think, might have a striker issue that I got to look at. So if that does happen, you can manually light those with a lighter as well. But now that these are burning, that tells me that there's propane in the system and that everything is ready to work. Being that your fridge, which is right here, runs on propane as well, if you have air in the line, it'll throw a fault code. So it's good to run the burners first. So right now it's set for auto, which means it's running on propane because I'm not hooked up to electric right now. And I do not have the generator running right now. So you see that the auto is lit up. The check light is not lit up. If the check light is lit up, uh, the first thing you want to do is try turning the t uh, fridge off and then back on. Um, this will light up if you run out of propane or if you have no power. So this is the auto button right here. Currently in this position, it's running on propane only. I like leaving it on auto because it'll switch between propane and electric depending on what you have available. There are push locks on the refrigerator and freezer right here that you have to push in order to open. But once you push them, it opens quite easily. You just push and then open. You don't want to force them. On the inside here, there's two things that uh, you should be aware of. And the first one here is, and this is a common issue too, is that this is your temperature gauge. And they belong here and is as high as a position as you have enough room to put the cable. You'll see right here that this is the indicator of warmer and colder. The higher this is, the longer it takes to read a cold reading, the colder the refrigerator will actually be. If your vegetables are freezing down here in these lower drawers or in this upper compartment, you can take this and you can slide it down a little bit and it'll be a little bit warmer. That's how you adjust those things. Pretty basic, um, but good to know. The other thing that people should be aware of is there's this tray here. And a lot of people will remove this tray. And um, what this tray is actually for is this will condensate. And when it's cold and there's humidity, it condenses on here. And like any other condensation, it'll start to drip. That dripping is supposed to go into this tray, down that hole, into that tray catch right there. There's a hose that comes out of there and goes out to the motor home and drains outside so that the water does not get into the motor home or the refrigerator causing damage to your, uh, well, to your food too, um, but also to the actual motor home um, under structure behind the, uh, I have to set my phone down and I apologize for that. That's kind of a taboo, I'm sure. But, uh, but yeah, that'll prevent damage from happening to the motorhome because of that sort of thing. So, okay, got that all hooked back up properly the way it should be. Sorry about that. Like I said, not very good at making videos. Not my, not my strong points here. I'm um, going to go ahead and turn off the refrigerator for now because uh, it's not being picked up for a few more days. Um, beyond that, inside here, we have uh, your cab over. In order to put that into a bed, you just pull this guy forward, pop that into place, and now you have a eight and a half foot wide, what I believe is the same width as a queen bed. So it's actually a pretty nice size bed. Um, the ladder, you can... I don't know if that one has the hooks on it like it should, but you typically would hook the ladders in here and then they go down onto the floor here and you can use the ladder to climb up um, instead of stepping on here or stepping on the backrest because that does break them. Um, a lot of people ask how much weight you can put up in the cab overs. They recommend no more than 350 pounds. There's a broom and dustpan that go behind here. Your kitchen table converts into a bed. It is hooked up with these uh, pipes. You just pop the pipes out, put the pipes in the door down here, and then the table comes down and sits on the uh, this little lip that goes around the whole table area there. And then you push the cushions down in the center there and in the center there. And then you can remove that one and use that as a pillow to go up here. Um, and that'll give you uh, your bed. You can also take these seat belts and tuck them underneath the seats so that way you don't have any seat belts poking on you. 
Inside here is a storage compartment. Um, you'll also find that there is a sunshade in here. And that sunshade goes in the cab of the pickup to, uh, to block the sun out. So that way you can have some, uh, some darkness to sleep in. You also have a skylight right here. Cranks open, give you some fresh air. Um, you don't want to drive with these open for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that this, uh, this cover that's on there, it'll blow off. Um, they're not designed to be open while you're driving. The second issue that you run into leaving those open while driving is it creates a suction on the vehicle. And by creating a suction on the vehicle, it's gonna take air in through the air vent. And the only air vent that's in this thing is actually the same vent for your black tank. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna suck air through the vent outside into your toilet tank, up out of your toilet, and into the cab of the truck. And that's just nasty. Um, nobody likes that. So if that does happen, that's the first thing you should check is make sure that all the vents are closed um, while driving. Or if there's a really high wind. Inside here, you'll find uh, your cups, your bowls, your plates, your dishes. Down below here, you'll start to find pots and pans, silverware, cookware, some more pans, things you need for cooking. All right here, you have your electrical panel. Um, really should have no reason to even open this thing unless you trip a breaker. If a fuse goes bad, you can actually see a red light light up behind this panel. To open it, you touch it, and then you give it a little pull, and it comes open. Um, these are a very high brake item on motorhomes. People climb into bed, they hit them with their feet, the next thing you know they're stepping on them, and they break them. So please be aware of that and try not to break them. Um, they're hard to get a hold of sometimes, and they're about $40 a piece. You'll find the breakers right here. If uh, one of them's kind of sitting in the off position over here, sorry, out of frame again, or kind of in between both switches, that means it's been tripped and you have to go to the off position and then back to the on position, just like you would in a house. You can see the little red light bulbs inside here. That would indicate if there was an issue with a fuse. I believe, I'm not 100% sure if I pull one of these out, if it'll do it. It does, so you see now that there is this red light indicator on. You also see that it shines right through that plastic. So if there's a bad fuse, you'll know about it and you won't have to, you won't have to look for it. It'll tell you exactly which one's bad. Once you get the, uh, I know I'm out of frame here again, but uh, once you plug that fuse back in, that light goes back out and life is good and happy again. Um, this bed here, um, it's just your standard bed. There's nothing really fancy about it. Um, I have noticed an issue that if it's really cold outside and you're using it for an extended period or if you produce a lot of humidity either through people being in here breathing or through cooking uh, without ventilating properly um, or if it was like a rainstorm and there was just a lot of mugginess in the air, which doesn't happen too often out here. Um, that sometimes there will be humidity buildup underneath this compartment that goes to the outside of the, the motor home. Um, so every once in a while it's good to check that and make sure that there's not humidity building up underneath there. Um, that's just an engineering thing that uh, wasn't really 100% the best on this, I guess. Um, but it's important to check, make sure that your bed doesn't get wet and then mold, which is an issue. So you want to make sure you avoid that. Um, over here, we have your thermostat, and this is the on-off switch for the thermostat. It's a very small switch, but you can see it says off right there. You got to push it kind of hard, really hard actually on this one, until it gets to the on position, which is that way towards the back of the motorhome. Um, the adjustment for it is right here. Um, it's already turned itself on. You can hear that running. It's right here. These little round guys here are the vents for the for the heater. I think there was another one. Yeah, there it is. Another one down here. So that's where the heat comes out. 
Um, if you go to shut that off, just by clicking the switch back towards the front of the motorhome, it doesn't turn off immediately. It has to go through a cool down cycle. It's a safety thing, so don't worry about that. Um, this is the only part about this motorhome I don't like is this bathroom door. It works just fine as a door, but sometimes going down the road, it's rattly and it's kind of annoying to me. This track here, it's important when you, <coughs> excuse me, throat's getting dry again. Um, when you go to put it back together, see right now it's not in place in the track and it's actually even worse. So it's important to uh, make sure that the track's in place like so, so that way it's not as noisy as it will be. Now, I know this is a taboo, but I'm going to show you the inside of a toilet on a video. So, this is your toilet. It's still a little stained from the uh, antifreeze that we use in the wintertime to prevent this from freezing. Um, so that'll eventually go away during the season, uh, but that uh, it's been cleaned and does not come off. So I got to figure that out. But the purpose of me showing you this toilet is mostly to show you how to flush it. There's a flush valve right here. If you press it and hold it just a little bit. No. Sorry, I guess it helps if you turn the water pump on. So let me turn the water pump on right here. And now, if you hit the water button here, just a little bit, what you can do is you can fill the toilet up with water to the level that you desire to have it set for. And then when you want to flush it, you just press and hold. And that'll flush it. So that is how this toilet works. There are instructions on the back of the seat there, typically. Um, Please use RV toilet paper as much as you can. It prevents clogs, and clogs and black tanks are not fun. Sink is a standard sink. Nothing fancy about it. Hot, cold water drains away. Same thing with the shower here. Hot, cold, immediately just goes to the shower head here. Um, the shower head you can actually use to rinse the toilet out if you're having, you know, issues, I guess but uh, you can use that to wash the toilet out. Um, it's also got a, uh, a pause button on it to save water. So there you go, there's that. Uh, let's see. Usually have hand towels for you in here. This is usually empty for things that you would like to have. Um, Kind of a bad design here. They left a gap between the cabinet here and the uh, the shower. So please make sure that you don't get water stuck down there. And if you do, please use a hand towel to stuff down there to dry it up so it doesn't uh, doesn't cause damage. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, you also have a another crank vent up here that you can use to open things up and to ventilate uh, both steam and other things. Again, you wanna make sure that's closed when you're not using it so you don't forget it's open. Um, overhead storage for pretty much mostly clothes typically would go up there. Over here, we have extra bedding. Um, the flat sheet is for the table bed or for the cab over bed um, or both depending on how many people you have coming. Um, obviously they're not proper mattresses so they don't have fitted sheets that fit those so um, typically we'll have towels here or extra pillows usually we have four pillows per bed uh, typically that's enough for most groups if it's not then we provide extra blankets and pillows as well um, inside the storage compartment um, these are actually really flimsy floors they're not designed for holding a lot of weight um, this is really just for hanging clothes up in, bedding, things that don't weigh too much. Down here, you just have storage doors. Nothing fancy about it. I should show you these two. These are the latch catches here. Um, if you try to close a drawer 
and it doesn't close right, or you're driving and you keep having drawers slide open, typically what's happened is this thing is in the clicked shut position, which is flat. They have a very heavy spring on them, and you can take a butter knife and pop them back out to this position. And uh, it's really hard to show, but this little hook basically just goes into this end here, and they hook and lock together like that. And um, they work good, but they break extremely frequently, and they're about uh, about twelve dollars a piece, believe it or not. So they just line up and click in. So it's best not to slam the doors if they're not working. Check to make sure that's in the open position. If it's not, pop it in the open position and then try again nicely, and that'll prevent them from uh, getting damaged. Overhead storage compartment right here. Again, for, sorry, my fingers are in there. You know, for whatever you want to store in there, we got a baking sheet and a cutting board and a bowl. Um, let's see. I think that's everything I can think to mention inside here. You know, we do have a cooking fan here and a hood lamp here. Um, it's really important that you notice that this is a really easy way to burn up a battery is this light right here. It's on, but it's so dim in the summertime, you can't tell that it's there. So you just want to make sure that's off if you use it. Um, it's really easy to forget and keep burning your batteries up and not know what's going on. Um, this is your AC unit right here. Uh, believe it or not, it does get pretty hot here in the summertime. And uh, people are always surprised. It always feels hotter here at a certain temperature than it does anywhere else in the world. And uh, that has to do with a lot of things, but, um, but it will catch you off guard if you're not expecting it. Um, you have your fan low, medium, high, and then you also have your, your low, medium, and high cooling. So you can switch between the different levels there and have your AC on. Um, and then you got your, your cold control right here, so you can kind of make it colder or warmer. Um, in order for this thing to run, you have to be plugged into shore power or have a generator running. That goes for the microwave and the 120 volt outlets as well, which you have located, you know, under here. And uh, I believe there's another one located right here in the bedding area. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, which I probably am because I'm on video and I'm not going to edit this thing. Uh, nope, I'm not mistaken. Has one here too. There was an optional TV for this thing that was never installed. Um, that's what this really was set up for, but it's kind of nice because you can plug in stuff when you're using the cab over. Um, while I'm thinking about it, this uh, outlet box right there, that's your propane leak detector. If that uh, has any kind of cleaning smells close to it or bug spray or hairspray, it'll, it'll be fooled into thinking it's propane as well. It's a very loud alarm. Um, it'll also go off if the power on the batteries are really low. Um, when you ran it out of power completely, um, it'll also set that off. It also shuts the propane off to prevent having a gas leak. So if there is any kind of gas leak, whether it's uh, user error or mechanical failure, that thing will scream at you, but it'll also shut the propane off. So if your batteries are good and you hear that go off, leave the doors open, walk outside, let things air out for a few minutes, come back in, verify if your battery's full or not. If your battery's empty, go ahead and charge it back up. If uh, your battery's fine and that is still going off and you haven't used anything with a strong odor to set it off, it means that there probably was an issue and you should call me right away. That way I can help you through the process of getting that figured out and taken care of. But rest assured that that shuts the propane off and protects you from any kind of harm. Uh, let's see. I believe, other than that, we have a uh, carbon monoxide sensor here where you're sleeping. Um, if you have that go off in the middle of the night, there is an issue. Could potentially again be that the battery is that dead and that uh, it just needs to be charged back up. So check that first. Um, when that goes off, you're in no danger yet. Um, it's a very sensitive alarm. So it's usually not a false 
trigger situation. Um, it's usually just an issue of, hey, we got the generator running, we left a window cracked, we're getting carbon monoxide into the vehicle, just gotta let it air out a little bit. It does take a while for that sensor to stop going off. There is a reset button on it that you can press and retest. Um, that's right here, if you press and hold right here, doesn't look like a button, but it is. Um, yeah, it just beeped at me telling me it was good when I pushed that, so. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please call me and ask. We also have your typical smoke alarm up here as well. So that one's pretty obvious. Most of you are familiar with those. Um, other than that, that's about all I can think to share with you on this motorhome. Um, if you do have any questions that come up and you would like answers to them, please give me a call and ask. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful trip.